Hi, my name is Drew Pemberton, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the Thermogravimetric Analyzer, also known as the TGA. The first thing you want to do in order to use the TGA is to make sure that the nitrogen gas is turned on. This here is the knob for the nitrogen gas. And so, turning it counterclockwise will turn the gas on. Be sure to not tune it, turn it on too high, otherwise the other instruments that use the nitrogen from this valve here will not be able to get sufficient nitrogen. After we have ensured that there is enough nitrogen gas flowing to the TGA, we are now ready to prepare our sample to put into the TGA. The TGA is basically a very fine balance. Very hot furnace with a very fine balance on the inside. So these are our sample dishes. And it's into these things that we're going to put our sample into. So we don't need very much. Just enough to fill it up halfway. Here is the control screen for the TJ instrument. What we'll need to do now is open the furnace. To do that, you simply press that button there, and then see here it says open. So we want the furnace to open, hit apply. and you'll see that the furnace is opening up. Now we can go ahead and load our sample into the furnace. You'll notice that there is a small ceramic dish already in the TGA, or on one of the arm balances. That is the reference ceramic dish. A normal balance would not need a reference weight, but the TGA, since it gets so hot inside, normal balancing methods don't work. So this works using a comparison balance. There's a small little pan we can push out to make sure that we don't drop anything. We're going to put this to the closest one to us. And in case you didn't see where that pan came from, it's right here. So whenever you're loading a sample, have that pan out there to make sure that you don't drop the sample. Now that our sample is loaded into the TGA, we can close the furnace by pushing apply. The furnace will close. There are several different options here on this menu. Uh, this one turns the air on or off. And where we do want the air on after the TGA is done running. To rapidly cool our sample, this one switches the gases. You don't need to mess with that. Uh, this one has to do with the balance. You also don't need to mess with that. And this is the shutdown switch when we're finished using the TGA. In order to set up our experiment, we need to go to the TA Instrument Explorer. Double click this icon here and it will open up the program which we'll use to uh, create our experiment. So first thing we're going to do is uh, change the data file name so I'm just going to call it calcium acetate test and we'll just save it in the data folder underneath the TA and TU chemistry folders. Okay, so now that we have that done, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do look at our procedure. So right now we have it set on ramp. So there are four different methods you can do. So cyclic is material is heated and cooled for multiple cycles. Stepwise, isothermal, increasing the temperature, holding it, increasing it, holding it, uh, isothermal, is just one big increase and then hold 
instead of multiple ones and then ramp is just heating the sample at a constant rate and then custom is anything in between uh, we'll just do simple ramp so start temperature it's generally best to just use the current one uh, and we'll set the final temperature at 900 that's probably good for this sample a nice quick pace is 20 degrees Celsius per minute uh, switch to gas 2 we don't have a second gas uh, so we don't need to worry about that hold time at final temperature 5 minutes so this is just a very basic method uh, you can customize it so much more for whatever you're wanting to do this kind of experiment would be more of a cursory glance at our compound under heat. So uh, we need to make sure that our flow rate for our nitrogen is at 100 milliliters per minute. So once we have all of that set up, we can apply and start the run. So in the background, you might be able to hear the TGA firing up. Once that's done, we can go ahead and look at the data. So now that the run is finished, we can go ahead and look at our experiment data. Let's go ahead and open up the file folder here and go down to Network, to Chemistry, TA, and into Data. So here's our uh, experiment file, calcium acetate test. So here's what we get when we open it up. So on the y-axis here you'll see weight percent. So it'll start at 100 and go all the way down to pretty much zero. On the x-axis you'll see temperature going from zero to a thousand Celsius. Remember our uh, experiment run was set to a constant temperature ramp at 20 degrees Celsius per minute up to 900 degrees Celsius. So the other things we'll see here on the other two y-axes. Uh, you'll see y2 in blue, so that's heat flow, and then you'll see y3, which is derivative weight percent. So the one we're real interested in is the weight percent versus temperature. So go up to graph and signals, and we can just go ahead and get rid of these other ones here. The data is still there, but we're just making it so that the graph will only display the things we want here, which is weight percent on the Y and temperature on the X. So hit OK. We did calcium acetate. So most of the time uh, in your sample, you'll have some water. So this first ramp here is around 100 degrees Celsius, which is about, which is the boiling point of water. So that weight percent lost there is just the water evaporating off. So it holds steady for a bit, and then we get to 400, and then it starts to decompose. So calcium acetate's first decomposition product is going to be calcium carbonate. Then it holds steady for a bit, and then it goes down to near zero. So there's a couple different things we could look at with this. Uh, we could look at heat flow, like we were looking before, and that just tells us uh, hey, you know, at 100 degrees here, we had some heat coming off. Uh, at 400, we've got a lot of heat coming off, and you can even kind of see from the heat flow two different sort of transitions here. So these two peaks in blue, and then we had a little bit of heat flowing off uh, towards 800 here. Uh, so let's see what else we can look at. So we can go and you can change the type of graph. So whether you want it, uh, the different derivatives, those can be useful. So let's go ahead and look at, let's do first derivative of temperature. So, so that'll show us a little bit more defined of when the weight is changing the most. Uh, Per temperature but otherwise most of our information is in this weight percent by temperature graph
Actually, I did want to give a quick note here about further analysis of the graph that you would get here from the TGA. So you'll notice that I made a couple annotations here of what these different peaks are, and I got those by uh, figuring out the change in weight percent uh, between these different parts here. You can figure out what each compound at each point should be. So the first one here, so it happens at around 100 degrees Celsius, so that would indicate to us that it's water, and most substances are gonna have that. This mass right here, so it's at about 89%, close to 90%. Uh, if you were to figure out what the molecular weight of calcium acetate monohydrate, it's about 176, and the mass of water is about 18, so 18 divided by 176, you get about 10%. So right here would be about when your water is gone and that's about where uh, you just get your calcium acetate. Uh, so looking a little bit further on, uh, right here, that's about where the mass loss stops and you get calcium carbonate because that is about 56 percent. So if you were to again calculate the molecular weight of calcium carbonate and then Figure out what the percentage is of your total. That's how you would figure out what that is. So we figured that out to be about 56%. And then this one here, it's a little bit odd. You would think it would just be calcium oxide, CaO. But in this case, by calculating the mass, we figure out that it's actually closer to about 40%. Um, and that is closer to CaO2 versus just CaO. Right here, it says it's 3.5%, but that's, it's flatlining at that, so that's maybe a little bit of the calcium that's left, um, just kind of as a residue, but otherwise that's kind of just like the weight of the pan, so that's basically zero right there. So you can figure out all of the mass from that. That's really how you analyze a TGA graph that you get by calculating out percent mass loss from the molecular formula here.